And now, from Norwich, it's the Quiz of the Week. Wow, it worked! It worked! Dear God, it worked! Hooray! Um, yes, hello! Uh, I'll tell you my Nicholas Parsons story sometime this episode. Uh, welcome to the Flashing Black Podcast. I'm uh, your favourite auntie, Siobhan. Uh, this, over on the far side over there, is um, Brian. Uh, Hello. Oh, I finally managed to work my mute button. We're good. Oh, bless him! It's amazing technology. And uh, from the uh, um, well, from wherever dwarves come from, it's Eddie. Hello. Why is it every single bloody fantasy computer game, whether it's single player, massively multiplayer, has dwarves with incredibly poor Scots accents? Oh, I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I, I'm not into that kind of film. Hmm. Anything with bad Scottish accents, I don't watch. Apart from Star Trek. I've just realised, now we've got this coming up, all three of us here, what we can do is we can do a trick one day where I throw a ball in the air and it lands on Brian. We're going to have to do that at some stage. And then I can throw it over to Eddie. And... Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a grief, so what the hell. Um, who have we got in there tonight? we got Master Dark. Hello, we got Abaz. Dear God, hello. These are a couple of gaming buddies. Um... <clears throat> I'm going to cough a little bit. So, anyway, yes, titles. Um, the music was, of course, Sailor's Century. Nicholas Parsons died. Um, we like Nicholas Parsons. We like him. Liked him. No, still like him, I think. Uh, completely blew us away in The Curse of Fenric. Utterly blew us away in that. Everybody thinks, oh, God, it's Nicholas Parsons. We all forgot that... He was, first and foremost, an actor. Hi, Nessie, and hello, Adam. Um, stop it. As soon as he turns up. Dear me. <clears throat> uh, oh, wait, I remember years and years and years ago. Went to the pictures, and there was a pre... There was a, a, a film before the main uh, picture. It can't have been that long ago. 90s, I think. Maybe slightly earlier. I don't know. Um, and... It was a travelogue presented by Nicholas Courtney, who appeared as an inhabitant of wherever he was, whether it be France or Scotland or whatever. And yes, it 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 it, it sort of was that bad. That's all I can say. Um, I met him once. Um, he was uh, what was he doing? Oh, he was the narrator in Into the Woods, the Sondheim musical. And uh, myself and my girlfriend, Sally, at the time, uh, we went to go and see it. And Sally had basically sent him a bunch of flowers and asked if we could meet afterwards, because she knew I liked Doctor Who and he'd been in Doctor Who. And so I went up there for about three minutes. Most of the time, he couldn't take his eyes off Sally. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of, OK. Um, but yeah. He seemed a very nice man, and I mean, he was still broadcasting at 96, doing the same old thing, doing, you know, just a minute, which we'll come back to afterwards. So, uh, yeah, farewell Nicholas Courtney. Nicholas Parsons. I knew that was fucking going to happen. I was going through the Tonight Show in my head earlier, and I knew I'd mix those two up. <clears throat> oh, dear. So, anyway, uh, boys, 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 talk to me here. Um, what sort of weeks have you had? I'll let you long. go first. It's been a long, long 564 days of January. That bad, huh? Yeah. Have you been dealing with idiots? Constantly. Okay, you know they're tuning in tonight. <laughs> Hello, all you muggles. Ah, oh, dear. Yes, you're one of those techno majors, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about you, Ellie? Uh, wife's birthday this week, so it was we, we take her out. We went, oh, yes. uh, we went to a, a Greek restaurant called Plato. Yep, the the, the pun's bad, but the food was good. Uh, so really enjoyed that, and uh, it, we the, the boys took their mum out today as well. So oh, it's been a good good weekend. Are you feeling yeah. the extra freedom we now have now we've left Europe? Oh, that, this is great. It's this all around. Great. 
It's, all, yes. it's almost tangible. You can almost feel it. It's amazing. This huge surplus of freedom we now have. Absolutely, really good. Uh, I was really, I was really worried that I was going to miss this week because last week's Doctor Who was. Ah, yeah. Shall we get on to that? Oh yes, please. Okay, hang on. I've got to try and find the thing where this thing is. There it is. Look, it's on there. So we go. Uh, we go to the library. I think it is. There it is. And then we hit. Oh, I've got to turn the volume up because I had to turn it down from before. So anyway, um, Brian, whilst I'm playing yeah. this, can you look up the dictionary definition? of the word professional, please. Yes, it still shows not up. See, it says not Siobhan, not Brian, and not Eddie. And he still managed to talk through it. <laughs> Hello. Of course uh, I did. Yeah, of course. No, it's normally me screaming because something's gone wrong. Uh, one day we'll play that piece of music, clearly. Uh, right, so. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ooh, can we discuss the episode that broke the internet? Hang on, I'm going to sum up. Hmm. The 15th... No, I got nothing. I got nothing. They fucked up my introduction to the series, the bastards. Ah, uh, that was one hell of a ride that episode, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Jesus. It Please go uh, on, was, go on, go on. I was going to say uh, one of the best, uh, and for me to say that during the Chibnall era so far was just uh, bolt out the blue. Absolutely loved it. I mean, it's 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 wedge shaped. It starts off as a thin sort of oh god, it's a Jadoon run around. This seems a bit feeble. Well, you and can then tell how good suddenly, it, then Jack the turns up, is. and you think, well, that's the big highlight of this thing. And then all of a sudden, suddenly, all hell breaks loose. It's... You can tell how good an episode is by the amount of nerd rage afterwards. <laughs> oh, stop trying to trigger me. I'll have a rant in my own time. <laughs> Dear God. But it's so much more fun. <laughs> no, I let me build up to it in my head, all right? And then I'll kick off. Oh, we, we, we've got to light the touch flame, Shivo. No, 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 no. Yeah, dear me. Unleash the Siobhan. <laughs> and there's tonight's T-shirt quote, folks. Um, it, it, it just... <sighs> It fucked up in my head, I'll tell you that much right now. Um, blew me away, I didn't see that coming a mile off. I I, I really didn't. Um, you've, you've really got to admire how they've kept this all quiet this season. Uh, oh, I yes. Know that. yes. Oh, yeah. The, the yeah, Jack thing was there in the background, but we'd heard that last year as well, So and then it just happened. Well, yeah, I and mean, then, he, apparently he lied. He told people that he was uh, renovating a house. That's why he was I in mean, Cardiff. Get off in an episode that has Jack come back, you that's think that's going to be the high point? Part. You know? Yeah, yeah that, that was me. That, was, that happened. It was nice, but it wasn't the big shocker surprise. It was oh, lovely. Loved it. And the thing is, the surprise was so great for me. The TARDIS porn didn't blot out the rest of the show for me. Normally, if there's a TARDIS like that, that's it. You can forget who's saying what to who. I'm just there drooling. Um, I, I Case in point being um, hell-bent. I had to watch it two or three times before I could get past the round things, essentially. Um, but this... There's a joke somewhere in there. It's I, I find it very hard to, to, to quantify it. It blew my mind. It really did. It started off um, so slowly and ordinary. You get a high point with Jack coming back, and then you think, well, okay, right, fair enough, they'll solve it. And Not going to have what anything the, more, what, and then... What? It's just about they, they, they go to the, the lighthouse, and then the doctor goes out, and she's digging something up, and you're thinking, oh, well, and then it's a TARDIS. 
And it's a lovely TARDIS. It's a oh, TARDIS oh, they're reusing the one from um, Twice Upon a Time. Carefully yeah. rebuilt 1966 prop. A oh, proper TARDIS. Yes, no. and the inside. Oh, God, the inside. Can we please have that as the regular control room? <laughs> please. Yeah, give me a, give me Brian, what say you? I've been, you mean I'm you completely don't like caught up in the gigantic here. fingers <laughs> of say you? doom over the TARDIS control panel? It's, it's, growing, on, it's, it's growing on me. I'm What's now going to laugh quite a bit because you claimed at the top of the show... That you, well, you know. <laughs> well, I love this episode. This okay, there's odd. either a problem, he's either re-muted himself again. No, I can hear him, Siobhan. Can you hear me? Yes, I yeah. can hear you perfectly. I'm talking. You are now. Okay. Hmm. Strange. It's a conspiracy. But, uh, uh, yeah, uh, mm. uh, it's uh, all a Romulan problem. plot. Jodie's TARDIS has grown on me. I'm just getting used to it, but it still just looks to me like a, a TARDIS with ice poles. You know the ice poles you get at the shops, Siobhan? I don't know if it's such a thing. That, that kind of break at the top and have formed these kind of pointy... Ha no, can't yes. get past that. Yep, no, 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 no. I, I prefer the blue colour for Jodie's TARDIS. Um, okay. I, li I like the mystery behind the walls, the darkness going up going off. I, I like that. Anything could be behind there. Um, but if anything comes out of this season, if this becomes Jodie's awakening, like, oh, yeah, let, let, let's retcon, let's go back, to, let's go through this room, and it's a proper TARDIS like that with round holes and the console. Uh, oh, please. Yeah, she didn't even say anything about the TARDIS layout. They always say something about the TARDIS layout when they're in there. I think she was in shock, to be fair. Yeah. To be fair, the rest of us were too. Yes, yes, there is that. Um, and then the discussion ensued in terms of where did this doctor come from? Where does she sit in the timeline? Mm -hmm. Is she one of the Morbius doctors? Mm -hmm. Is she a later incarnation? At all? It's just, I've never been this excited about Doctor Who. In a it long, is, it's great. Everything's time. wide it open. Is. I mean, I don't have, I mean, like you say, the nerd rage was, nerd rage was strong. Oh, God, they bust canon or this, that, and the other. Canon oh, doesn't God, matter. Live with the alternatives. It's a program that goes anywhere, anytime, and sideways in space remember you know it goes everywhere it does everything just live with it um all the possibilities there are the what ifs if you like it, it it's it's great it can go anywhere so your mind can just imagine all sorts of wonderful things uh it, and they it's had another time lady in it ah yes you're still trying to trigger me um <laughs> yes. nice try brian <laughs> That's it just wasn't it. very subtle. Very I'm sorry. Oh, dear. All right, let's mention this. Jo Martin was absolutely superb. She was brilliant. She and nailed a, a, it right from really the perfect. start. Um, the costume's a bit funny. Um, it's a little bit too stylized for my liking, but To be fair, fair they all are. So. Um, yeah. Um, however, shut up, Brian. Um... Some of the reaction to Joe Martin online has been hysterical, vile. Um, the poor woman's received death threats. Uh, she's. It, how the hell did this happen in Doctor Who fandom? Doctor Who fandom has always been toxic. There's no two ways about it. You only have to look at the DWB crowd. Um, back in the day they oh, that sense of entitlement to the show is is so misplaced and so wrong yes we may love it but it's not made for us it is not ours um the uh, look i can't understand racists at all I, I and i don't want to because to do that i'd have to think like them and i don't want to go anywhere near that and uh, well, what is wrong with so these people? It's, there's a lot of toxic fanboy culture. Well, yes. I mean, it, it, like I say, it's not just the Who community. Remember, no. the Who community is um, a microcosm as, of society as a, lar as a large. So you are going to get these little things in. But I can't understand why these people are like they are. Well, I, 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 how the I hell do you think babies. like that? 
They're hmm. entitled man babies. That's all they are. It's, I pointed this out on a, another thing that had become toxic that I was party to, and it's just like, that's enough. You're an entitled man baby. It's not yours. I don't care how much money you've spent on comic books. You don't own it. They can do whatever they want. If it's not for, not for you, you don't have to buy it. You don't have to deal with it. It's made for mass. It's a mass audience, not for a small niche. Yeah, got to entertain and, and, everyone. But the the thing is with this, right? So we, we've all been crying. Well, we say it. We all have been crying out for. Give us a story arc. Give us. I love a good swear. So he turned around. Do you want a story arc? Hold my beer. Yeah. Get, have, mm -hmm. have a, they, we, I wanted a swerve. My God, they gave us the swerve of swerves upon swerves, and I absolutely loved it. And. I, I was I get totally I, I wasn't looking at uh, Ruth's Doctor Ruth's sex. That's what we're calling her, by the way. I am Dr. totally Ruth. Yeah. pointing that phrase. Yeah, I yeah, called it. Got it. You got it. And it was a case I, I get totally lost in the moment, and I thought her performance was fantastic. I th I, th there was the, uh, the such a difference she... between the Doctor and Ruth. Exactly. Yeah. And it was just that flick of a switch. Uh, the whole chameleon arch, and it was like she was the doctor, and she was a doctor of action. She, she it was kind of reminded me as well of Pertwee's doctor, in terms of it was like a bit kick ass. Uh, and I know there was the whole debate around, but she was carrying a gun. she, uh, she used the old time glove, reverse time yeah. glove trick. Yeah, and it was Jodie says to her, "We don't use guns," and she said, "I know, be quiet." It was just all part of the plot. She was great, great performance. Uh, and I, I managed to avoid. Well, you pointed me in the direction of some of the things that were being said, Siobhan, and I, 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 it was like. Pandora's I wanted to give you a little bit of context for what was going I, on I, out there. I, I had to look, and it really shocked me. And it was a case of can she not just be judged on a performance, which was top notch? Can we not get judged on the fact that a lot of the things that fans, older fans, have been asking for? But they loved it in spades. It was one of the best, most exciting episodes of Doctor Who I have seen in many a year. Yeah. Uh, yes. It also harkened back to the old Doctor. Exactly, yeah. Because if you notice Gantz, her outfit looked remarkably like the Valyard. I need to look at that. That's a I very good observation. I am putting a link Brian. into the chat now. Which chat? Uh, the Twitch chat. Good luck with that. Pasted. Have you sent it? Anybody wants to, just click on the link, take a look at the Valyard. Hmm. I have not seen it come up. Is that up on your stream, Eddie? Uh, no, but I'm on a lag. I didn't think so. Um, nope. Okay. No, well, you're not allowed to post links, mate. It's a Twitch thing. She did have the skull cap. Yeah, but that's Time Lord and City Hats. Right. All Time Lords she have skull have, caps. It wasn't it's, it's the, the skull it's, cap. It had the ponytail coming out of the top with the red hair, but it was actually there. No, Bopey, there's no link. Um, he's not okay. allowed to post links in my Twitch stream. <clears throat> but, but the, the whole thing around this was, it did, you, Brian was right, it not only broke the internet with idiots, it, let's ignore those, it broke the internet with everybody coming up with, where does Ruth Doctor fit? Where does Doctor Ruth fit? In? Oh, exactly. Where? Exactly. And All the theories going first. around. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to take credit for this. It was uh, actually uh, no no theories or whatever. Um, in case right. they might be right, unless okay. um, I I heard a theory today that it does make sense, and I'm hoping it's wrong because that way I won't have been spoiled. Um, okay, well, I will keep them. I, I, I've got I, I read this and I thought this is a beautiful theory. It just Outside and inside the show, it just makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. But I will keep my Um <laughs> Trust me, they all know what the Valyard looks like. Look, you're elevating futility to a high art. There's nothing you can do Isn't to prevent the catharsis do? of spurious morality. You blundering imbecile. You'll trigger a ray face shift. <clears throat> the very fact I can quote all that worries me. Mind you, it's worse if Sinister's on, because we can just do Genesis, Genesis of the Daleks constantly. It, it, it's, oh, God. I miss Sinister. Don't see enough of him. Um, yes, so we need to move on from this one. Um, can we say 
We were moderately happy with it. Yes, I thought it was pretty good. Yes, it was an amazing episode. Okay, so that's Doctor Who and the Doctor Who. Thumbs up. Uh, moving on, tonight's episode that we've just seen. If anybody hasn't seen Praxius, now's the time to mute the uh, audio on this stream and invent all sorts of things that you think we might be saying. Because uh, there will be spoilers in this discussion. Um, so I don't blame you if you bugger off. I, you can always watch the show on YouTube afterwards, all right? Um, okay. Praxius. Good, solid Doctor Who. I enjoyed it. We got introduced to the guest cast first, again, which meant we had more involvement with them. Um, about halfway, I really enjoyed the mystery of it. The building up of the mystery and every, uh, and all that. I loved that. But once they'd sort of solved the mystery part of it and were putting, trying to sort it out, I don't know. It, to, for me, I could have done with a lot more of the mystery. I'd, I'd happily see another episode of this of this story if the mystery was, was stretched out and they had more time to come up with a little bit more to it than was on the TV screen. One thing I am going to say... Impressed. Yeah. One thing I am going to say is Jodie's performance this season has just got amazing. There's a streak of serious in her now. And it's like there's steel in her back. And she's going somewhere with this character. I, I'm, I can see it. It's, it's like That's... McCoy, that first... Series 24, everyone's going, oh God, oh God, oh God. And then you look at Dragonfire, and there's just that hint there. And indeed, Delta and the Bannerman. And then, of course, after that, he wipes out Scarrow. Again. Um, so, Jodie Whittaker, I take my hat off, quite frankly. Yeah, and this I did thought... feel like a new adventure up to a point. For uh, This, for, for me, is uh, Jodie is the Doctor now. Mm. I, I think the last this season's been a turning point. There was... Critiques and criticisms I had last last season, season eleven, but with this, she took charge. Mm -hmm. She was the one that solved all this out. Mm -hmm. uh, she made she made sure, apart from two exceptions, which you could say is out of control. She made sure that everybody lived. She made sure that everybody was sorted. Everything was sorted out in the end. And, and for me, it was, yeah, she's totally now the doctor. The question uh, is, I mean, the little plot hole here. How are they going to be able to manage to stop all cases of the virus? I mean, all right, the cure's there, but surely there's going to be some people the virus is going to get to before the cure gets to it. Just a thought. It's a nitpicky thought. Am I being stupid? I, I Your silence speaks know. volumes. No. We're thinking. I, I, I just felt that it felt more like filler. It had nothing to do with the overarching meta plot. This no, late in the that we know of. The series, well, that we know of, but still... Ret retconning in a weak episode to the overarching meta plot that's just bad writing this show this episode was too compressed it happened way too fast the time scale was off jody did did seem more doctory that was a good thing the companions just seemed to be running around they had three extra people i it was too much for an for the hour show that it was a lot. They are having a problem with that this year. I mean, we said the same with Orphan 55. Um, however, you've got to have these episodes which don't have the arc. You've got to have them popping up here and there to give people a chance to breathe. I mean, especially after last week's show. There's yeah. so much going on in yeah. our head. You but know, have something to breathe banger, first. Banger, you got it. You, keep, you have to keep the momentum going at some point. Yeah, but I mean, they, they did it. It didn't. They, they, it's they, these kids, Javon. It's these kids. I mean, Brian's the youngest of the three of us. That's true. They've got, I am the for, baby. For, the for me, baby. It was, I, 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 can't, I need to stop saying That's for me. I, I, needed, I needed a pause for thought. My brain was overloaded last week, and this was just good old-fashioned spot on. No nonsense, Doctor Who. Look at uh, Series 12. Um, sorry, not Series 12, Series 10. Um, the Eaters of Light just before the Doctor falls in World Enough and Time that's a non-plotty heavy one you'd had the Excellus not Excellus, fuck me the Extremis um, story, mid-mile story arc in there 
Um, all right, hang on. Adam said a thing. I liked it a lot more than you did, it seems. Wonderful to see the Companions actually doing something this season. Good to see the Doctor using them as her team of investigators. Really good stuff. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. I, I, I did that. enjoy it. It's just I wish there was more. And again, more tick in the boxes and criticism from last year. Yaz was front and centre on this. It was she was stayed behind. There's something she was... going on with her. You think so? Mm, and I think it springs from. I might be reading too much into it, but I think it springs from her reaction to being trapped in the uh, tubular bells place um, in Spyfall. Um, because you saw how upset she was about that. And she's been a bit off since. Yeah, uh, but no, we I think it's something don't really like that. know this because there, it's been going at breakneck speeds. There hasn't been any chance for characterization. Oh, no, for no. There's been, there's been clues in a couple of episodes. Just, just the way Yaz is played. Something's off. Something's off key. I could easily be wrong. I'm probably seeing something that isn't there. But... I don't know. There, I, there's I something thought, niggling at Yaz, and I think that's how they're I, playing it. I thought she, she meant she was, she was the brave one. She stood behind. Did she get the doctor to give her an hour? She wanted to go back. There was something in there that the, 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 the equipment that they were trying to protect. She was going to get it. Uh, Gabriella stayed behind her. It was it's it's like Adam says. The, 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 it was a splitting of the across the globe, putting the, the companions all over the, all over the globe. All had their own role to play. I, I really enjoy. I, I, I think they it's just... all, all the companions played to their strengths. Yes. Yes. Mm. But again, just... when she wanted to stay behind, again the way it was played, she was too desperate to do it. And when Yaz and Graham were put together at the start, it just reminded me of Shaggy and Scooby Doo. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was the fact that uh, the, the whole the whole little thing around the the, the 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 tracker, and it was like you're holding it upside down. All right, right they're through that door. I just lovely. I just love Graham. Graham just that was oh perfect. yeah, no Graham was definitely back on form. That was yeah. The perfect moment. Yeah, but I still say worst Uber ever takes it. <laughs> I'm sorry that that was just a great line, it really was. Okay then, um, oh, so we're, we're generally happy with that, yes. I I I found it. I think I enjoyed it a little bit more than you guys. I, I thought it was good, solid Doctor Who, where Jodie again was showing her chops as being a proper Doctor. Fair play, I enjoyed it. I thought it was way more filler, but hey. Hey, carry on. You, you honestly thought it was just filler. Seriously? Yeah. yeah, I felt it was way more filler than the last episode. So you basically you wanted to just keep going, building and building and building and building. Yeah. Well, my, my heart could take that. Could take that. Could no, you could have. To, <laughs> I, I, I disagree with down. you. Don't let my heart stop. I want to see this thing just go insane. No, because I mean, I, I'm sorry, I will disagree with this. It's uh, you need to have a pause like, for your brain to catch up after such an episode, such a revelation. You gotta be and, and no, because you're still watching this one thinking, how is this going to be affected by it? And thankfully, as best we know, it didn't. It gave us a moment to go, OK, right, OK, re re reset everything up here. We're all right. Everything's OK. Let's keep but going. Say, but, but saying that, no, I want more. I, I want more Ruth. I want, I know they're saying he won't be back. I want Captain Jack back. I want more now. I want more. I'm going to be I, I, I'm reset. I'm reset. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, sorry, Eddie, I, the music cut you off. It wasn't intentional, I promise. No, no, no the, 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 I saw it came on and I, I, I came off. Uh, bef before we move on, Siobhan, should I share my opening credits story about how I can't watch the opening credits and take it seriously anymore? Oh, yeah. yes, Adam oh, will appreciate totally, it. Yeah. Adam, this one's for you. Uh, well, well, Adam, uh, a friend of mine recently had a colonoscopy uh, and reminded me that many years ago I, I had one as well for... A, to get a checkup, uh, and he said that uh, you know if you look at the opening titles carefully <laughs> enough, 
it just totally reminded him of the, the video of his colonoscopy. And, and it, 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 <laughs> he had a video of it? Oh, he watched it. Hi, guys, pop <laughs> round. I'll bet open the sherry. Do you want to see my home bring, bring, it, bring, it, bring it home, yeah. Put it in the video record. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I can no longer watch the opening titles now because it just reminds me of a colonoscopy. Is it just me? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, no, obviously it's your friend as well. Uh, my friend as well, yes. Yeah, so there you go. You, you, you've got some company. Um, yeah. Well, there we go, folks. Now you've seen it, you can't unsee it. That's the level. Of, that's that's my level. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm gonna expect the episodes to start buying me dinner first. <laughs> <laughs> and a floor show. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Are your brains working, gentlemen? Oh, mine's eh, never works. We'll give no it a more go. than normal. All right. Uh, chat, you are the referee in this. Guys, we're going to talk about the Curse of Fatal Death, which Brian has seen. However, no repetition, no deviation, no hesitation. All right. Have a feel, second. Feel, feel, feel. Oh, yeah. Quite, quite obviously. Um, don't worry about that. But, um, yeah, Brian, uh, please talk about the curse of fatal death without repetition, hesitation, or deviation, starting now. It was Bing! Actually... Hesitation. Very good. Come on, chat. Come on. It was very good. I enjoyed it greatly. Uh, the fact that it was finally something funny from the 80s that I could enjoy. Um... Bing! Hesitation. Yeah, 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 I hesitation. always hesitate. Uh, you got that one, Eddie. You, ha you, you, you take on. Come on, so, guys. Written by Stephen Moffat, uh, one of the first instances I think that he actually wrote for Doctor Who. So it opens up where we have Rowan Atkinson, who is portraying a version of the Doctor, and his glamorous Bing. assistant. Repetition of the word Doctor. Over at you, Siobhan. Oh, God almighty. The Curse of Fatal Death. Well, I've gone already. Um, I'll keep going. Hang on, hang on. Uh, the Guess of Fatal Death was produced for comic relief. As has previously been stated, Stephen Moffat was the writer. Uh, no. Bing. Hesitation. Thank you. I think we need to Sorry. give this up. We're never going to get through this, Siobhan. We're not. Just, just talk about the Curse of Fatal Death. I'm going to have a little lie down. Go for it, Brian. Well, the fact that they have the Master and both of them were one up one-upping each other on going back in time to the architect of the dungeon. That was fantastic. That was yep. classic comedy. But uh, then uh, he moved the the uh, trap door underneath <laughs> the master, and he pulled the switch. 390 years in the sewer. <laughs> With only a slime oh, beetle yeah. for company on those long, lonely nights. Uh, want a bit of context for this? Please do. I'm thinking for Brian. You know all about it. I'm just wondering if Brian wants a bit of context. No, I'm okay. Go for it. Fuck you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is for not ranting. Bolshe apprentice. Thing. Oh dear me. <clears throat> you will be punished for insubordination. Uh, right. Uh. But this was done for in 1999 for the British comic relief that sprung out of the whole Band-Aid uh, thing. Um, again, written by Stephen Moffat for the third time during this review. And um, basically produced by Richard Curtis and, and various people like that. Uh, normally, it, remember, this is three years after the TV movie. And as far as everyone's concerned, Doctor Who is now dead. The TV movie failed and... But whilst it did very well in Britain, it didn't do very well in the States. And so, um, like I say, Doctor was just dead. And then this thing came up, and most pastiches, they take the piss out of the wobbly walls, they take the piss out of this, they take the piss out of that. They're laughing at the show. This laughed with the show. It accepted yeah. the limitations and, and just worked with them really well. And, and and as well as the cliches, all the corridor running, for example. Um, 
This was a love letter. I, 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 I say nowadays that Stephen Moffat's written three love letters to Doctor Who. The first of these was The Curse of Fatal Death. Uh, the other two, Day of the Doctor, and then the novelisation of Day of the Doctor, where he's cut completely free and goes for it. Um, this was a love letter to Doctor Who, a programme we thought, that was it, it it's dead. Um, <laughs> it's not safe to be, to be scared anymore. Uh, so, it was beautiful. He uh, also I... went through all the Doctor's remaining regenerations and ended on a woman, which was wonderful. Three settings. And I can't remember any outrage at the time. I... Well, it was a comedy piece, to be fair. People don't tend to get too outraged at comic relief. Occasionally but, they will. But that, that's what the, the other good thing about it, though. Was Joanna Lumley not kind of tipped to be the first like, female Doctor? Everybody, everybody thought that, so. Everybody that appeared uh, in it, from like, Hugh Grant uh, to... Uh, oh, sorry, Richard... Richard... Oh, what's his name? E. Grant. E. Grant. It was all people who had been at one point or time or another rank linked to become Doctor Who. I think the only one that was missing was, was John Paul, Cleese. Oh, Paul Daniels, I was going to say. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, dearie. And his travelling companion, Wizbit. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, a communication using farts, exactly. So this was a lovely little thing to come up. We, we watched this and it was almost a, a nice little farewell. Almost. And then, of course, there were other things kicking off. For example, um, the Schalke Doctor, uh, Richard E. Grant again. Um, and then in 2003, there's the whole um, sit yourself down, have a cup of tea and a biscuit, but Doctor Who's coming back. So this was almost the last hazard, basically, Brian. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. It was a great afternoon. I had time. I ate my lunch. It was fun. Oh, no, it was good. Um, right, next week, we're going to be listening to the first of the new Tom Baker box set. Uh, it's set during series 18, and I can't wait, quite frankly. Um, so there's that, as well as next week's episode, the title of which I don't know what it is. Hmm. No one's picked oh, me up on that yet. Oh, we we're not reviewing Picard episode two? Oh yeah, we 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 just thought it. Well, it didn't really do nothing much happened. happened. <laughs> it was lovely, but you know it was there. Um, yes, Adams picked us up. We are sticking with Sundays. It's from now on. The Flashing Blade will be on nine p.m. GMT here at the home of time um, on the Sunday evenings. Uh, an hour after Doctor Who has finished in the UK. Um, our apologies to American viewers if you haven't seen the show. It's just that, um, it, well, to be honest with you, for the boys it seems to be more convenient, so we're going to do it that way, quite frankly. Um, yeah. Plus we get in early before the nerd rage starts. That's exactly. true. I'm waiting for people start having a going about all the plastic thing on the telly tonight. Um, that's going to happen. I just sat there. Yep. Yeah. Go for it. Louder, Next week's episode is called "Can You Hear Me?" If that makes any sense. Yes, love. Can you? Yes. Yep. Yes, we yep. can hear you. Yep. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. Fresh. The fact it took you so long to click on that. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> this is what happens when you get him at the end of the week. Fuck me. Two days off, and that's it. He's dead. Brain dead. <laughs> One great yeah, dinner, all it takes. Exactly, and sitting some su su uh, okay. uh, You've lost me, guys. Uh, yeah, you got me. Yeah, every day. That's almost up there. A comfy chair. Anyway, um, <laughs> right. Uh, something else, very quickly. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be guesting on an episode of Professor Dave's Ark in Space. Oh, good. Um, so. Um, are you right. doing Pertwee's Doctor? Uh, well, yes, that's just it. The actual show... Uh, we're recording on Saturday the 14th. Oh, Valentine's evening. They want to spend it with me. Well, I suppose that's apt. Um, OK, um, so if you've got any thoughts on the Pertwee era, or specifically the Claws of Axos, uh, whose praises I will be there to sing very loudly, uh, please 
this is an easy one to read, really. Uh, please send them to this email address. Prof Deus, so P-R-O-F-D-A-I-S, at hotmail.com. He's still using Hotmail? It's almost up there with AOL. Um, <laughs> I Jesus. know people that use AOL. You've got company. She used to scare the living shit out of me, Joanna Lumley. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. I, I had AOL. Three o'clock in the morning. Okay. A friend would come online. I'm sitting there quietly reading or something like that. And all you'd hear suddenly at 3 a.m. is, you've got company. Jesus shit. <sighs> AOL, responsible for so many heart attacks. Anyway, so Prof Deus, or, or Deis, uh, P-R-O-F-D-A-I-S at hotmail.com. I uh, will be recording in two weeks, so you've got a bit of time to think about it. I hope you do. Um, it would be lovely to hear your thoughts. Um, that's because I'd be telepathic by then. Anyway, um, yes, uh, it's time to say goodbye. Say goodbye, boys. Goodbye, goodbye boys. boys. Oh, wow! You managed to do that in time with each other. I am so impressed. <laughs> We have been rehearsing all week. Oh, we God. Uh, well, all I'm going to say is get a life, basically, and cue the end credits. <laughs> As long as we have done our best, then no one can do more. And life and love and happiness are well worth fighting for. They're well worth fighting for. Faith, love, hope. And the greatest of these is... Here's John Benson with a rundown.